afternoon, everyone. This is Cha of the Asian Secretary team, and welcome to our special Asian hour. We are now, we are now using GoToWebinar. If you need assistance, please feel free to send us a message through the chat box so we can help you. If you are encountering difficulties in configuring your connection, please look out for the session and rejoin again. You may use your smartphones or tablets to join by using the webinar ID 898-90883. Before we start our webinar, here are a few reminders. For attendees, your microphones are muted throughout the meeting. You can chat your thoughts to us through the chat tab, and for questions, please type them in the questions tab. All questions will be answered after the speaker's lecture. We have with us today Dr. Prapat Suryapal. Dr. Prapat is currently serving as the head of the division of Bioinformatics and Data Management for Research Unit at the Faculty of Medicine, Syria Hospital. He is also a member of AHIN, an AHIN Regional Enterprise Architecture Council for Health. His interests include big data and system analysis, Dr. Kapad is also helping the Ministry of Public Health Thailand in data analysis and implementing health information systems. We will now call on our speaker, Dr. Kapad. Hello. Oh, yes, can hear you well, Dr. Kapad. Okay, yep. Hello, everyone. Good, good afternoon and greeting from Bangkok, Thailand. Thank you, Ahin, Dr. Alvin, and Dr. Bunshai for supporting and helping us with this webinar. So as Charles said, I'm Prabhat Pun. I'm the Head of Bioinformatics and Data Management for Research, Faculty of Medicine, Silat Hospital. And I'm, so, I'm also a member of Ahin and Rich team. Um, just to give you a beautiful picture of our faculty. This is our faculty, Silat Hospital, one of the oldest and largest university hospital in Thailand. We are by the bank of Chao Phya River. And our office is here in this building where Dr. Arwin visited us on the 8th of August during Silas conference last year. We have an honor to present our system to Dr. Arwin and later we have got an email from, from him saying that this system could be useful for many of us in AHIN and he would like us to talk about it. So this is the beginning of the story why we have the presentation. We call our system BDM scan. BDM is the abbreviation name of our unit. So within about 30 to 40 minutes from now, um, I would like to talk about three topics. First, uh, I would like to tell you about what is the BDM scan, how does it work, and how to use the system. Before we go into details about the BDM scan, I would like to mention about the usage of BDM scan in our, in our faculty. In fact, we have been using the system for about 10 years. The system has been heavily developed during the first three years and was maintained and stable for the rest. It has been used in many clinical departments, including diabetes center, internal medicine, pediatric unit, health promotion division, and stroke center. And then it's becoming more popular and intensively used by our faculty administration to get information from the faculty member. This includes our faculty human resources to get performance agreement and evaluation. This includes uh, our knowledge management to do the annual faculty survey of about 15,000 staff, also public relations, and occasionally we got requests from other faculties such as the Faculty of Social Science and Humanities to do the data entry of survey from communities. So far, medium scan have successfully been used in these studies. We have used it in survey, examination, cohort study, 
disease registry and longitudinal study such as dengue cohort or even simple evaluation form after workshop or conference. One milestone that we are we proud of is that we could process a faculty survey of more than 12,000 copies which typically takes more than three months for officer to key in. With our system, it took only five days with high accuracy and we need only two persons to process and validate. So medium scan is an automated data capture system that perform data entries from paper-based forms to come in, come in a variety of formats such as survey, evaluation form, and case report forms. So I think at this point, um, there may be a question in your mind that what about using other technologies for the data entry? What about web applications like Google Forms or even a tablet-based system? In fact, we have been thinking of the same thing and we have been using and exploring these options as well. It is true that in some cases, web application could be suitable. It could make the data collection process faster and more convenient. However, I think this technology comes with a high cost and requires developing system and user interface. During the course of the system development process, it can take up to several months to finish any modification made to the system, usually require programmers task with lots of meeting tests to get it done, resulting in a delay in, deli in delivering the result from the system to a user. And we also found that using application or web-based application in clinical environments could have a negative impact in terms of interaction between clinicians who perform data collection and the patients. I mean, even with the tech, tech, savvy, tech savvy group, we have held two similar academic workshops for statisticians. In one workshop, we asked the participants to give feedback through Google Form. We would like to go green, you know, we asked them to, to fill in the, the, the form in Google. And in our recent workshop, we decided to use our paper-based feedback form. I think you can guess which workshop the high response. Yes, a paper-based survey yield high response. I think it is faster, natural for the participant to fill in the paper forms. But the common pain point for using paper forms is who is going to key in the data. This is where the medium scans comes in. It is cost saving because you don't need to hire staff to do, do, to do the boring task of key in the data. It is time saving because you just design a form in paper and use it without having to wait for the application development. So like we designed the evaluation form for our workshop just in 30 minutes and use it in our, our workshop and get the feedback statistic within 15 minutes after getting the forms back. And the workshop instructor just got the feedback just before they went home on the last day. And it is accurate. Because we, we don't rely only on the reading from the machine. You, you can think of the BDM scan as a similar system to the double entry system. But the first data entry is performed by the computer program why the second data entry is performed by a human being. With these two-step procedures, the BDM scan can yield a high quality of output, which is normally comparable, if not outperform the conventional manual data entry by human. So the BDM scan process, there are six steps involved in the whole process from start to finish. First, you design the data collection form, which you have to do anyway, right? And then you collect the data. And then the task that will be performed by the BDM scan is that scan and digitize the image, verify and validate data, 
export the data, and then you get output for report and analysis. Good news is that you don't need to do the task of the BDM scan. What you have to do is just one, two, three. Typically, you design forms, few forms, and then just send us those forms, waiting a few days, and you have all data back ready for report and further analysis. Currently, we have a few requirements for the form design. So, the form used by the BDM scan can have a simple design or complicated design based on the preferences of the users. And we have three main components, barcode, checkboxes, and numeric boxes. You may ask for alphabet of free text. We have tools to read alphabets, but the accuracy is not very good. They need more development, and the system also can capture the free text as images that you can always refer back. But I think, as you may have already known, free text is not very really useful for analysis. According to our experience, most useful forms contain mainly only checkboxes and numeric boxes. So this is the example of a simple clinical record form to fill in data from laboratory. If we zoom in the form, you see the main component. At the top of the form, we have a project-specific barcode. The barcode allows us to scan forms for many projects at the same time. And data will get back into the correct project without confusion. And then we have form border that surround all the other components. This allows the system to correctly align the form because sometimes the scan image are not really horizontal. And then we have check boxes, we have numeric boxes as needed. With only these components, together with a clever form design, you can capture a variety of information with the convenience of check boxes. For example, this form is used by a diabetes project. You can see that from this form, the information is conveyed through marking boxes for respond to images and questions. So it's just the way that you design the form, and then you can use check boxes and numeric boxes to get most of the data you want. And this slide shows our internal design. If you work with BDM scan, you will see this form. But if you are just user, you don't have to deal with this form. <coughs> because after you finish the form design, we have a tool to map our boxes in the form. So if we zoom in, and then you define field saying that which you comprise which boxes. For example, sex is composed of checkbox number eight and nine. And last visit is composed of numeric box number 22 until 27. So you can define the field this way by say the name of the field and which boxes belong to that field. And that's it. It's ready to use. Actually, this task is performed by our unit, so you don't need to take care of this. I just explained to you how it works. And then we just use the form to collect the data. So it depends on your design, who going to fill in the form. You can send it out as a survey, uh, have doctor fill in, uh, have nurses fill in, and then here at the faculty, they just send the form, they just submit the form to our unit. And then we will do this task, the scan, verify, and export the data. Um, if uh, people submit the form to our unit, we have a high-speed scanner. 
that can scan at about 40 pages per minute. So it means that we can scan about 2,000 pages per hour and more than 10,000 pages per day per machine. And then we have a human, we have our staff to verify it. the data that you see later, and then we can, the data get into the database and we can export the database. So this is the example of our high-speed scanner. So you can just connect it to, to any notebook or desktop. And I have a short video to show you how speedy the machine is. So if, if you, you are not convenient or not comfortable to send in the, the, the paper form, you can scan the form yourself and then submit the image to our unit as well. You can scan with any scanner. Just set the scan to black and white color at 200 dpi. So the typical file size for a single A4 paper is about 40 kilobytes. So 1,000 pages is only 40 megabytes, which is really easy to transfer via LAN or internet. And we also, I mean, we have used to transfer about four gigabytes through internet, which already contain about 100,000 pages. The, the transfer of the data is not a problem. Then once the data has been scanned, the form has have been scanned, this is also the internal design. This is the real screen that our staff can see. Uh, normally, user doesn't have to deal with this, so I just explain the concept we use to validate. This screen is for checkbox verification. For checkbox, you just do in two steps. The first step is to look at boxes that the system think they are check. Okay, so this is screen show the boxes that the system think they are check. It doesn't matter where the boxes are or in which forms. The system just pull them together and display it on the screen. And then we rely on the human nature that can detect the strange turn. So if we zoom in, okay, you see that there is one box that seems strange but the system think that it is check. So the system show this box on the check screen and give where we want to it. And it is this one, okay? So if you click on this particular box, the system will show a pop-up display which where the box is exactly located. So you see it where it is in the form. So the system knows exactly which box belongs to which form and which field. And then you see that, oh, it is not correct. It should be unchecked. So it should change the value from one to zero. And that's it. This is the step that needed for verification. So normally you just did a few collection and you go to another page for those boxes that the system think they are unchecked, do the same collection, and then you are done. Our value will be correctly assigned back to their field. That's it. It means that you can work with thousands of checkboxes in one screen instead of having to type the, the, the value manually. And this is the same for numeric boxes. The system will interpret handwritten digits based on our training set of millions of handwritten samples. Depending on the legibility of the handwritten marks, the computer program can yield up to 95 to 99% of accuracy. Typically, we, we get a better result from nurses' handwriting. It's a bit worse if it is from medical doctor, I and mean, you know that. And then we just validate our tended like we, when we do checkbox, we have check and uncheck. For digit, we have zero and two nine. 
which seem to be a lot, but normally it is not. Most forms will contain more checkboxes than numeric boxes. And once you go through all that, you are done with hundreds of pages of form at the same time. And then once the data is digitized and get into the database, after it has been verified and validated, it is easy to export the data into text file or export for Excel or SPSS analysis. And you can reformat the output any way you want. You want it code in memory, you want it changed to male or female, whatever you want. Or you can even add some calculation. And so we arrive at the last part of this presentation. I, I hope that we have stimulated your interest in the system and may see it used in your environment. In the current stage, we cannot implement the system in other, in other countries or other sites, but we can provide remote service if you can you scan and send us the images of the form. We are working on a better model to serve members of AHIN. I mean, right now we totally own the back-end part that include the photo detection, verification, validation, and exporting tools. But the front end, the, 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 the screen that I showed you before, that we used to verify the checkbox, we used to verify the digit. Uh, this part is a bit outdated and it's still under a license from the original software company, which we adopt and adapt the system. I mean, the front end, but back end is totally, I mean, rewritten by, by, by us. So to maximize the system and relieve us from the copyright constraint from the original system company, we will need some funding for developing the system. So if you like to use our system, the service could be operated by AHIN. And that being said, we, we need your endorsement. So please show us your support during the fifth AHIN general meeting. So thank you AHIN, thank you Shah for helping organizing this webinar and see you at the marketplace in the fifth AHIN general meeting 2017 in Nebidor. So now I welcome any questions, comments and feedback for you all. Thank you very much. Thank you for the comprehensive lecture, Dr. Papad. We are now open for questions. For those with questions, please find the questions box below and type your questions in. So we start with this question from Dr. Prabin Shakya. Uh, it reads, have you compared the cost of this system with OTK data collection for researchers? Compared to, to, to what? Could you say that again? Uh, compared to the cost of um, ODK data, collection for researches? ODK, okay. Um, no, normally in, in Thailand, I mean, I, I don't know the, the cost for, for other country, but in Thailand, um, if we ask the staff to type in, typically for one page, it will cost, I, I can't calculate it back into standard currency right now, but let, you, you can compare the, the cost, let's say like this, for one page, normally it's about five to 10 baht Thai currency, but with our system, it's go down to one baht. So it's at least five to 10 times less than normal cost if you hire stuff. Uh, there's a follow-up follow question from Dr. Prabhin Shakya. Uh, I mean, tablet-based system, open data collection. Open data collection. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure whether I understand the question correctly, but I mean, we we have we have used the system to to many type of the study, except one thing that we haven't reached the standard yet is the the standard of the official clinical trial trying to, to get uh, the certificate for that standard, we are working on, on one 
drug trial, but I, I can't say that we 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 reach that standard yet. But you can adapt the system to use for any data collection. We even link it with the electronic capture system like REDCap. All right, I hope that answer satisfies your question, Dr. Pavin. All right, uh, we have another question from Dr. Phoebe Elizaga. It reads, can BDM scan work on forms which do not have the set standard data collection format? Example are the no borders, no checkboxes. <laughs> Unfortunately, right now, it cannot. Um, because um, it, it really requires a lot of complicated calculation. So what we normally do is that um, we work with the user. User send us the form without border or without any format. And then we reformat the form to fit into our system but keep all the, the content intact. And then that's it. That, 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 that's all we, we, we have to do. All right, thank you, Dr. Prakash. Uh, here's another question from Dr. Afandi Aquilian. It reads, how about doctor's writing? Is it possible to make a doctor visit with BDM scan? Is it possible to make a standard form? Yeah, we, we, are, we are working on this. Um, we, we don't, I mean, at the end, our ultimate goal is to to use this as a to capture as an electronic health record. But what we are working right now at the faculty is that we are mainly focused on research. Right now, in in our our patient clinic or or, or in patient clinic, we have a system we call it eye scan, but uh, it is not that. Uh, clever. I mean, after the the doctor write something in paper, and then we we scan, we scan all pages as an image, and then at the end the doctor can recall the image, or and read it on the screen. But it's just image. So we would like to integrate our system that if some patient uh, is recruited into some clinical trial or clinical cohort and then what the doctor has written in the form can be interpreted by our system automatically. So that, that's what we are working right now. Yeah, I, I don't Dr. know whether Robert, that... Thank you for that answer. <laughs> yeah, uh, so for those with questions, please type your questions in the questions box. We will also acknowledge the presence of Dr. Buntai. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Thank you, yeah. Thank you Dr. Bahad, for uh, presenting us uh, this uh, uh, development. My question to you is that if a countries would like to use the BDM scan, can it just uh, get your software and then install uh, and then uh, use it? So, so I, I know that you have two steps, right? One step is to decide the form. The another step is to, uh, after scanning the BDM scan, you read that form and put it into the digital, uh, the digital form. So for a countries like uh, would like to uh, use this kind of the uh, 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 the, 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 the application, what should the country do? A country or the, a department like the Ministry of Health in, uh, uh, in, 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 in Philippines uh, would like to uh, uh, implement some kind of the survey or the uh, clinical research collecting form? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, as I, I, I mentioned before, I mean, at at the current stage, um, we are constrained by one copyright about the, the front end. So we cannot really implement the same system in other country or in, in other site until we redevelop the, the front end, which is not that difficult, I would say. But uh, 
for for the immediate use of the system right now is that to just design the form in normal Microsoft Word or whatever, send us the form, we reformat it into our BDM scan form, which means that we put in barcode, we put in the border, and then send back to you the, the, the form. And then you just print out, and then you use the form, fill in, and then you scan the form, send us the, the, the scan image, which is about 40 kilobytes per page, which is quite small, I would say. And then we just use a system here to verify, validate, and send you back the result. So this is the, the immediate way to, to use the system. And then um, I would hope that uh, we can get some funding from, from supporting partner of AHIN so we can rewrite the, the interface. And then we have a complete control of the system that this whole system can be uh, installed in, in any country members. So the front end, what you mean is the front end that formatting the, uh, 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 I mean the, the, the survey into the system, into the, the, the format that the BDM scan can, uh, uh, can, can use it. This, uh, no, uh, do I, I understand? The front is, is, is on this slide. This is, the front is the way to interact with the, the database to do the verification. The system already has been, inter I mean, the system has already interpreted the image to tell whether which box is checked or unchecked. But for the second step, we need a front end to interact with a human to look at the boxes and verify what the, the program has said again. So this part, this screen, I think you still see see the screen, right? So this screen is the the part that we have to rewrite to be able to to distribute the software to to other side. Okay, I I see. Uh, understand more. I think this is a very good uh, uh, good e example for uh, our Asian activity that we have uh, artifacts developed by one countries and have the potential to. Uh, to another development, and I, I hope that uh, with you to present this in our uh, in a digital health conference and uh, general meeting would uh, stimulate our interest and also the developing partner to interested uh, about this system. Uh, do they, another question is that, do they have a similar kind of this uh, application or this uh, application in this uh, data collection in the market? And how, uh, uh, if there is uh, uh, one, uh, what, 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 uh, how to compare with this uh, BDM? medium uh, scan application. Yep. I mean, for the one that working with this kind of image, the one that I'm aware of is called DataFax. Um, but it has not been used for, um, I mean, casual or form. How do you say? It doesn't use in, in variety of, of work. It mainly used for clinical trial. And there are some, some part that is not as flexible as as our system, um, data fact, it has been geared toward the clinical trial, the accuracy of the, the character recognition is not as good, but it's required human to verify. And at the end, in the office, they have to do the verif verification in step. I think they require about five to six people to do it in steps. And the license is about, uh, 35,000 US per year, about five years ago. I don't know how, how much is it right now. So this is the, the only uh, similar application I am aware of at the moment. But they have never been used for survey evaluation form 
or examination. I think this system can be adapted to, to use in, in many kind of, of, of situation. All right, thank you, Dr. Buntai and Dr. Prapat. Uh, here are a few more questions from our participants. Here is a question okay. from Dr. Yuda Saputra. Yes, it reads, is there already a white paper that provides effectiveness to this intelligence scan system? Oh, um, <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm not aware of this. I, I, I try to search for this information about I mean, honestly, about three years ago, and, and, and I, I, I could not find it. And we we are writing a proposal to to measure the effectiveness comparing between paper base and and web. We are in the process, so I don't know. Maybe we can do the the study in two sites if uh, if uh, you are interested in. So we can combine proposal and then we can compare compare the <laughs> the result between Thailand and, and, and your country. All right, thank you. Uh, here is another question. This one is from Dr. Eftekar Karim. The question is uh, for free text recognition within the form, which languages are supported? Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. The, the sound is interrupted. Can, can you repeat this again, Char, please? Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, the question is for free text recognition within the forum, which languages are supported? Oh, the free text, it is captured as images. So um, it cannot, right now I would say that there is no good system that can read the free text because it can be quite liberated. Um, so what we do is that normally for the free text, it is in in the empty text area, and normally we just put it as note uh, for some special uh, that I mean we just put it as extra area that sometimes the user want to fill in something that is not really planned before, like adverse effect or some comment or whatsoever, and then we can capture it as a an image, and then. Uh, the user can click on the system to open up that form and read it by themselves or there will be some stuff. I mean, we, we, we have one project that they would like to capture this part as well. So we designed the system to help. It means that if the text area is not empty, so it means that it has been filled in. So the system will show the image on the screen and then a staff will look at the image and have to type to key in by themselves. So this is the only part that we have to manually key in. I, I, I can't help on this, but the part that is check boxes and image boxes will be handled by, by the system. All right, I hope that answers your question, Dr. Karim. Uh, here is a question from Dr. Naim Mifta. It reads, what type of software are you using? Custom made, commercial, or open source? And, oh, okay. and what are the factors that made you enable to choose this solution? <laughs> okay, uh, just just uh, so just a short history of this one. At the beginning, this software is sold by a company, Thailand. Um, they create their web interface, and then in the back end, they use an engine from Germany to read the, the, the handwritten digits. And then when we bought the software, it turns out that the, the back end, the function that detect the boxes, I mean it image processing, and the function that read the handwritten digits is not as good because the handwritten of German is not the same as the, the handwritten of digit in, in, in Thailand. So we decided to, to change the back end to make it better. So I wrote a Python script myself to do the image processing, to cut the, the boxes. And then I used an open source called a Professor Jan Le Kun who wrote a, a, a software for AT&T and later released it for open source 
and I use it to train with our data set. We have handwritten of doctors and nurses here about, I think it's more than million samples now. So we train them ourselves, we have classifier, so we have our backend ready to use. And, but the front end, we still use those from, from the company. So this, this is the, the current situation right now. So uh, we, we have total control of the back end. I, we, we own the software, we wrote the software to process the, the image by ourselves. And we use the open source software. We use our own sample set to train, but we use the, the front end from the company. Yeah, that, that, that's all the system. All right, thank you. Here is another question, Dr. Papad. This is from Dr. Crystal Fe Roderos. The question is, in the interest of data privacy and maintenance of confidentiality, um, I would like to ask if data will be kept by the division or if everything is sent back to the user. Oh, <laughs> great question. Um, right, right now, um, right now, the the user who verify the the data have access to the whole image of the, the form. So normally if it is confidential, it would be much better to have the system installed at that local site and have your own user to verify it. Right now we have the system implemented in human resources division so they can control all the data. We at our unit don't don't have, I mean don't have access to to the image, and and we need we need uh, the people who the data to see the image because in, when you see the example that if you see only boxes with some I mean ambiguous whether you don't know whether it's checked or unchecked or you don't don't know whether it's number five or number six, it is important that you can see the whole context. So I think for for your question. Uh, it's better if you have the system installed into your local site and then you have your trusted member to verify the, the image. All right, uh, our next question is from Dr. Praveen Shakya. Uh, what are the minimum requirements for set up backend? Minimum for backend? Oh, easy, just normal desktop. That's work really well very easy, doesn't need that much. Common commodity right, desktop you. enough. Okay, uh, here's another question. This is from Dr. Karim. Uh, is it possible to come into terms with your API so that the other party can develop the front end for themselves based on the API you provide to use VDM scan? I would really hope so. This is, I really, plan for and, and, and would like to do it. The, the thing is, as I told you, that the, the original software does not, I mean, does not design for the APIs. It's quite tight integrate between front and, and back end. So, I mean, if we have resource to, to work on this, we would create the, the API level so anyone can help with the, the front so you can create a font that as convenient, as beautiful as possible. But right now, yeah, thank you. don't uh, have this, API here. Yeah. All right, thank you, Dr. Prabhat. Uh, another question from Dr. Praveen Shaka. Do you have any plan to use medical ontologies and develop algorithm for national language processing in the future? <laughs> Frankly, I, I, I don't have that plan yet. If you are interested in this part, we, you can join in and help us. Thank you. Uh, another question from Dr. Naeem Nisa. As there are a variety of type of patients in care and variables to store, how can you accommodate variety of data? Are you using different phones? Um, it's just the way to design form. Um, in most cases, we can design form for that. But if it turns out that the form is quite complicated and it contains a lot of conditions like 
if you say yes here, just jump to this page and fill in this form. If you answer no here, I mean, if there are a lot of condition, I think it's, it is a good indicator that you should move to web application. In that case, I think that web application is more suitable. All right, thank you. Uh, there's another question from Dr. P. V. Elizaga. Uh, in your opinion, how far are we in the bioinformatics or health informatics field in terms of finally reading handwritten notes, especially coming from Dr. <laughs> I think the, 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 the thing is, especially coming from Dr. Um, <laughs> um, I would say that if we want a reliable information, uh, I think it's still many years uh, to have someone who can verify the data. Um, right now, I still think that um, through in the form as paper, we have it used for maybe three to five years from now. And then along the way, this will be replaced by tablet and stylus. So this is, I think, this is where the future will be. And the handwritten, the first handwritten that will be captured by, by that tablet will be English. So if you write everything in local languages, that, that may be a bit longer. All right, thank you, Dr. Prabhat. Uh, last call for questions. If you have questions, please type them in now. Uh, we would like to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Alvin Marcella, who is in oh. the line now. Hello, Dr. Okay. Alvin. Hello. Hi, Alvin. Charisse. Yeah. Hello, Prabhat. Thank you very much for your uh, contribution for our uh, eight hour. Uh, I'd like to discuss more about how we can support your work over there, including uh, giving you developer uh, assistance and maybe other things that you might need. And we also want to start testing your technology over here also at the Philippine General Hospital. So I hope uh, we'll see each other in uh, uh, Nepidao uh, yep. when we're together for the general meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yep. Thank you very much, Alvin. And thank you very much to everyone for uh, joining us today. Are there any more questions, Charis? Uh, yes. No more. Yes. <laughs> no more. Yes. Please go ahead. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah, please. I, I think they have a one last question from Dr. Afadi. Uh, they said, how much time BDM scan to process one checkbox to digital data, and how about machine learning? Yeah, we are we are using machine learning to 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 read the, the image. Um, I I I cannot calculate per one checkbox because I think it's too short. Um, um, I would say that the time used to scan the image. Is longer than the time used to interpret the image. So the bottleneck is not in the interpretation. The bottleneck is in the speed of scanner. Oh, okay. uh, this is for you, Dr. Papak. Uh, we will meet on February 2nd uh, in Central World. Uh, uh, in the afternoon, are you available to come and have a chat with us in the in the Hidden Award uh, conference? Uh, we will have a sign meeting. I mean, informal sign meeting. Uh, I what what I mean I is mean I and Dr. Alvin and another uh, uh, people that are leading uh, uh, are working on the general meeting in Nepido. Mm. Yeah, I, I, you mean this coming Thursday, right? Yes. Dr. Yes. Alvin are coming to Bangkok tomorrow, oh, I think. Okay. Oh, I, will, I, will, I, will, I, I will try to bring home one of your scanners, Dr. Prabhat. <laughs> yes. What is the model of yeah. your scanner, Dr. Prabhat? 
I, I, I can I can be there. I have a meeting here and it finished at 10, 10 a.m. in the morning, and then later I can see you at the Centon World. Okay, I'll, I'll, I will call you uh, personally and talking about the, the place and time that we uh, have a, a meeting. Okay, yep, thank you very much. One, one okay. final question, Dr. Rapat. Uh, what yeah, is please. your scanner model? It's a. Uh, oh, I, I can't remember the number model, but it's Canon. How many sheets of paper can it scan automatically? Um, normally I put. No, 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 no. More, more than that. Normally I put around no. 150. Really? Yep. Wow. Yeah, it's, it wait. I mean, 40 pages. So if you put in too few, it. Not good. Uh, okay, you can try to win and you see. <laughs> and how many people, after you scan it, how many people are checking the quality over? Now I need only one to take care of the whole faculty. And before before you did the scanning, how many did you need for quality? Be before I need about three because the accuracy is not that good, so they need to change the box more often. Yes. Yeah, but now I need only one. Only one. Very good. Thank you. Uh, for because we have uh, some time, so I would like to talk to uh, the participant also to Dr. Papat and Dr. Arvin. Uh, this is question to Dr. Arvin that uh, we are now in the uh, I mean conversation with a group from University of Southampton that they have a software uh, research management called Edge. My question to Dr. Arvin is that can those uh, data management, research management, data research, research data management and others uh, from that Edge software and this one can be complement over? Thank you for the question, Dr. Bunchai. For those uh, in the audience, what Dr. Bunchai uh, is mentioning is the EDGE system. This is a research management information system developed by the University of Southampton. And we wrote a joint proposal between Thailand, Philippines, Sri Lanka, and UK to develop Indonesia, Indonesia also to um, implement the EDGE system for research management. And so the answer, the answer to Dr. Bunchai's question is yes, because Edge system has an API, and this API can now be connected to Dr. Prapat's software, so that the researchers can still continue collecting their paper forms using Dr. Prapat's uh, form software. They can continue filling it up. It can now be scanned. And then after the scanning, after the quality check, it can now be fed into the edge system. I think this is something that uh, we can ask uh, University of Southampton to also invest on. Over. Okay. I think we have questions from Raymond. I think we, we still have uh, some time, eight, eight minutes. Uh, Dr. Bapak, uh, this is a question from Dr. Raymond. Uh, Samiato, uh, which uh, uh, he, he asked, how accurate is the system and the verification tools? Okay, um, for um, I think uh, he, he asked for that for the digit because the, for the checkbox is not that difficult. For the digit, if it come from the nurses and this data is in the training set. I would say that the accuracy is nearly 100%. But in general, if it comes from a new project or if it comes from a medical doctor, the accuracy will be around 95%. Okay. Uh, another question is that is the verification performed manually via the well, uh, verification tools? Yes, uh, the verification has to do 
has uh, has to be done by uh, manually. Um, but the people who verify the data can work anywhere because it is web interface. So they can log in the system, look at the screen, and then the screen show the list of, for example, list of checkbox, and then that people. I mean, the verifier just goes through quickly to see which one should not be the check, the checkbox, and then to change the number. That, that's it. And I have some idea to, to improve it, but, but we need some, some time to, to work on that. But so you mean, yeah. so you mean that uh, P, uh, human, you do the, the verification, but you have some kind of tools to help human. And those verification tools can be, I mean, uh, developed to getting uh, to, to to be better. Better, yeah. Um, what what right now is that first for checkbox, I have a tool that just exclude the box that we are hundred percent sure that it is empty. It means that there is no pixel within that box at all, so it should be empty for sure. So we don't have to verify that, we exclude it. We make sure that it is unchecked. But for those check, sometimes people just scratch, scratch it out. So it's contained the ink inside, but this is not checked. So you require a human to, to make sure, I mean to read that, oh, this is not checked because it's scratched out and change it from check to unchecked. Um, but normally it is not that much. And I, as I said that it is, natural, it is human nature to detect the, the different in visual pattern. So once you have the, the box of check, I mean the box of check box is on the screen, you can quickly spot where's the strange pattern and you change it. So my, my staff right now, there's only one, he goes through I think about 100,000 boxes per day without any problem. Okay, I think this is, might be the, the, the last question uh, from Dr. Afandi. Uh, uh, he asked, uh, is, possible, is it possible to use the camera phone uh, like OCR tape without scan, without scan uh, it says in scan, scan machine? Is it possible to read data as we know of quality of uh, camera phone result? I think the question might be to ask about possibility to use the uh, camera phone for the uh, to, to 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 capture the image and use by your uh, your uh, your application. Over. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we are interested in this because we would like to use the, the smartphone camera to replace the high-speed scanner. But um, there are a few technical problems that we have to overcome with, like for example, the, the size of the, the image is not always the same. The orientation, the light, I mean, even the light, the, the quality of the light. So, I mean, if, if there are someone who are interested in this can, can join in. I'm really happy to, to help because there are so many areas that we can improve the system. Okay, I think uh, the time is up and we think we, we thank Dr. Dr. Kapak and all the uh, participants that uh, I think we, uh, the, our webinar is useful and we are going to have the more Session uh, more frequently. Uh, Dr. Alvin, you uh, this time you should have a last word. Over. Thank you very much, Dr. Bunchai, and uh, a lot of our gratitude goes to Dr. Prapat, who is my idol in molecular biology. <laughs> Dr. Prapat, <laughs> you are not just a molecular biology scientist, but you are also a hacker. Thank you very much for. Uh, these gifts of your open source software. Uh, to us, you are the leader of the intelligence scan system, so if you need anything from the community, we now have uh, six uh, developers in Manila. We have other developers also volunteering in Indonesia. 
you're the leader of this project, let us know how else we can help you improve on the software. Uh, definitely, we will connect you to Professor James Bachelor of University of Southampton so that this can also be attached to that uh, EDGE system. But congratulations to Siri Raj Hospital and uh, for them being fortunate to have you around and making sure that the research uh, is running smoothly through the technologies that you have contributed. So thank you very much and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Bukai. Thank you, okay. Thank you very much, Alvin. Okay, thank you. See you this Thursday. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See you. Bye.